great, great. And back in the dark ages, 21 years ago. So Kevin talked a lot about community care alarms. That's my, I've been in service provision for the last 25 years, delivering services way back when it was a social alarm provider. Now, people will think Telecare Services Association, which we've just recently rebranded to TSA, the voice of technology-enabled care. Some of our members still deliver that community alarm product. Now, how long is it going to be there? This is what we work with our providers to bring them back up into technology-enabled care to go into the phase of six and seven that um, Kevin talks about. But we can't just do it with the technology. Our providers are there trying to work with social care and health commissioners, and they get closed doors. Now, I think it's amazing that the HSN today is one a member of TSA, but more importantly, there's probably about five, six, seven, eight members of TSA, providers sitting in the audience, starting to participate and collaborate. I'm very proud when we start, especially when Kevin says technology-enabled care, and he's putting community in, Four years ago, when we looked, I came to the TSA, firstly as the chair, then I moved over onto the executive team. We used to talk about telecare, and if you went into a, house, into a health room, nobody would listen to you. They would turn you back and say, that's not for me. It's pull cords. Well, yeah, it is, but it's so much more. So when we looked at our new vision, it was about people embracing that and enriching their lives. Now, that's different. It's not buying technology and we do need to park the technology for a minute because we know it's there. Kevin just told us about it all. It's been there for years. The analog technology was there, but there was no collaboration and no pulling together to deliver a service for that individual. There's lots of individuals want that basic telecare and need that basic telecare. But there's individuals like you and I in the communities, I'm a diabetic, I need something different to support me to be health and well and continue working. So our vision now, the technology-enabled care, is starting to be used as that terminology for all the things that Kevin's just talked about there. That includes everybody sitting in this room, but it also includes all of those people in that service chain. TSA, originally, we, our main USP is standards. So we have the code of practice that's been around for 21 years. And when Kevin mentioned 285 providers of telecare services, we obviously looked at telecare monitoring and telecare response. Well, we know that's a traditional model, and it's not fit for everybody. It's not what we want to move to in the 21st century. It's not what your digital plans say that you need. It's not what the consumers need, but it's still a need in the community to 1.7 million people. Our role is to help our members go to that broader, looking at well-being, looking at your wearables, looking at different technologies, but how do you work with your health and social care uh, commissioners and commissioners as in individuals in their own home to commission the right service. It's not about the technology piece. It's about meeting your need as an individual and what does that mean. Some of the time, you might not need technology, but some of the time you definitely will. And as your needs progress, technology can certainly be an enabler to make sure that you don't go fall off the end in residential care into nursing care, which we don't want to happen. So one of our biggest achievements last year was to get Paul Burstow, you will know him, he's the ex-care minister, he led three million lives by industry. Didn't work. Technologists were leading the transformation of services. Didn't work. Because what we need is all of our partners sitting here, so your AHSNs, Dave and others, working together to actually tell the technologists what that service provision needs to look like for our individuals. But what I'm really proud of is Paul's come out of government. He's took his role seriously. Now he's working with TSA to go, we need to deliver this. So we've got an influence and strategy. We've looked at a national narrative. And one of the biggest things out there is those people, those consumers, all the people out there that could benefit don't know what it is. And they wouldn't trust technology even if they did know what it is. So we need a narrative. We need something that will be a trusted brand. We need to get a national profile. This is what Paul Burstow is actually leading at the moment. This is us. 
value proposition. What does it mean? So what would Liz get from coming as a member of TSA? She gets the opportunity to collaborate with a more wider audience of housing. Um, yes, health's in there, but we're just starting to go into health. But we have a big following of social care. So it gives us that, you know, opportunity to work together. And we've obviously been working for about 18 months now. And we're looking at new projects that we can do that will really make a difference. But all of that core membership, we have Norwegian government coming in, looking at strategy from a Norwegian point of view. We have new corporate members on lobbying and influencing. But our key proposition to you is keep, if we're going to put technology in and new services, like the code of practice, it has to be safe and it has to give quality. So the code of practice has been redesigned. It's going to be launched at our conference and it's a text quality framework, standards. 10 standards looking at effectiveness of the care, um, ethics, continual care, um, quality management, change management, all the things that will take the providers out there from where they are on stage one and two on Kevin's diagram into six and seven. But to support that, one of the big things, Alison Marshall, we work with Alison quite a lot, is education's key. Education, it's, it's everywhere. It's whether it's a qualification or whether it's just those tools to be able to deliver services, quality services out there operationally. So we've just gone in partnership with London Fire and purchasing an e-learning tool that will be delivered at conference in October. And that's to link competency training to that safe quality management framework. Now, if we can get that and we know all of those services are being delivered by people that are trained to a certain level, commissioners are designing this training, commissioners from health and social care evaluating, then we can start to see the shift. And the other big piece is procurement. Everybody blames procurement because there's no growth in the, in the sector. It's not procurement that's the issue, it's the commissioning. So it's commissioners knowing what to procure. What do they want to do? How do they want to change? What are the outcomes? We're looking at a major piece of work with Paul Burstow leading, um, looking at commissioning. We're talking to Liz um, Mears about commissioning and procurement. And I'm really proud. I know Dave's sitting here, but Dave coming into to membership as TSA. We also have Sunland CCG. We have other York and Humber and other HSNs. So we're doing lots of work together. But the CCGs are key in this, but we need to get them to listen to what technology-enabled care really is. This is a new framework that we talked about, and I'm not going to go in detail, but you can get these slides. I suggest that we come along to conference, or we come along and explain what this means. Now, all your technology providers around the room will be able to be credited to this that says you're delivering quality services, whether that's a supply, installer, whatever it may be. This is the education platform. And one of the key things when we looked at the diagram from phase one, two, up to seven is how many times do you go in the community and you can't get digital connectivity, how it doesn't work, or you've got a great piece of kit and you can't connect. So our providers in the room would say, I'd love to purchase that digital solution, but when we put it out there, it needs to be safe. So our technical roadmap is led by a steering board, a technical steering board, and we're working with Ofcom and others on a digital roadmap. We will look at 2025, and that does align to that diagram from Kevin. It is going to change, but we need to make those services safe. We need to make sure we go through that te transition. This technology roadmap is available, and we'll be able to share it with you. On Thursday this week, we have a, a commissioners coming together in a think tank in London. There's commissioners, there's Deloitte, there's technology people looking at commissioning procurement. What's good, what's bad, what's not, not there now? And out of that, we'll be launching a white paper in October at our conference, a white paper that helps all of us out there about the commissioning and procurement route. But it'll also look at commissioning for that user. So that person in the community, how do they commission safe services for themselves? How do carers commission services for themselves and know that it's safe and they can actually go and be that trusted service provider or that trusted technology? I know the answer to this in this room is you are all looking at health and well-being of communities as a key aim. 
There's lots of people out there delivering services that don't have that aim. And when you look at some of these on here, if you go into a housing environment, housing don't have digital plans. Housing don't, some housing don't link that. Our aim in TSA is to work with our partners and make sure that people are digitally aware, that they're ready for the next phase. And I would just like to sum up, because I know Kevin always talks longer, so we need to wrap this up to keep you on time. So the International Conference is on the 18th of October. Um, these are our partners. Health is one main partner in the whole technology enable environment. But on the 18th and 19th of October, we have Liz addressing the main plenary um, from the HSNs who looked in and supported us with that agenda. We've been working really closely with ADAS. ADAS are looking and shaping that agenda from a social care commissioner. And you've got, you know, don't let's forget about home care. Home care are a big sector that could benefit from technology and digital solutions. But how often do we really engage? Bridget, the chief exec from home care, is really, really eager to work with our partners to, to look at new solutions for home care. And not let's forget in housing. It's where it all started 20, 25, 30 years ago. They're a major player in prevention. They're a major player at looking at well-being in the community. Let's start working more closely with our hot housing partners and pull everything together. I'd love to see you there in October. Please have a look on the website and, and come and join. I'm not going to tell you to join his membership. You can, but you can also collaborate through the HSN because together we will be stronger and we've got to stop being in silos. Lots of membership organisations, lots of this, lots together. Get us all in a room together and let's start shaping the future. Thank you.